I know you've been talking a lot about process over results, but like, nope, we're just gonna be happy. We're gonna ignore. Yep, gonna be happy. Gonna be happy. That makes me happy. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits. Left Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How am I supposed to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Never in doubt, Leafs win! Five to four over the Detroit Red Wings. And allow me to roll out the red carpet for the best tweet of the night. Detroit's leading scorer, Tyler Bertuzzi, has been invisible tonight. I don't think he even has a single shot. Leaf fans, I know you're here to listen to me discuss a Leafs win, but Detroit Red Wings fans, first of all, it's been such a long time since I've gotten the chance to speak to you. Great to see you again, but allow me to have a moment here. I'm gonna give the Red Wings a lot of kudos in this video. I like the Red Wings. I borderline love the Red Wings and what they're doing. That team is gonna be such a problem for so long and I hope they do really well this season. But I hope they lose every single game in Canada without Tyler Bertuzzi. The Detroit Red Wings have been great to start the season. They're 4-3-2. and two. They're way better than they were last year. And they lost this game by one goal. You don't think Tyler Bertuzzi would have made a difference? Steve, I come here for an escape. Well, why don't you escape out your front door and go right down to the local shopper's drug mart and get the shot! Anyway, Red Wings fans, I love you. Really like what the team is doing. But you get it. Right? You get it. So... If you haven't been keeping up, watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle on the Sportsnet YouTube channel every single Saturday. You can stream the game with me and the game, you can watch the game with me on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Last week was a little sad. They lost 7-1 to Pittsburgh. That wasn't that fun. This one was wild, and off the top, I said this was a must-win game for the Leafs. Here we go! No, 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 hear me out! Because I was amazed how negative Leaf fans were, because I was just happy that they won in Chicago. An overtime win is always... That's, that's Halloween candy. That's just... I know it's not good for me, but it tastes great. But a lot of Leaf fans saw it for what it was, a game where the Leafs were down 2-0 to the very, very not good in a variety of ways Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, they came back and won, but a work of art it was not. And now all of a sudden, you get the Detroit Red Wings the next game. Here's why that's important. The 7-1 loss against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Penguins were missing Crosby, Malkin, Russ, Carter, Latang. You've heard that story a thousand times. Relevant, however, and left out of that conversation, the Leafs had played the night before and the Penguins had rest. So, if that matters... The Red Wings, who played the night before and are missing their top scorer because he's a silly goose, should lose to the at-home, well-rested, missing nobody because they didn't get their shot, Toronto Maple Leafs. This game was certainly not a work of art either. They ended up winning 5-4. They allowed a goal with less than 30 seconds to go, so we couldn't even sit comfortably during those final 30 seconds. But I tell you what, at very least, the Leafs looked like the better team all night long because they should have. Very important heading into this game, and it's going to be a theme throughout Justin Hall, a healthy scratch. Don't, don't, don't. Look at Jared McCann's numbers, don't. The Leafs with three brand new pairs, and I gotta say, I kinda dig it on paper. Morgan Riley, who just signed his eight-year extension, you can watch that on my channel as well, that was the last video. He's up there with Travis Dermott. New shutdown pair of Jake Muzzin and TJ Brody, and the kid pair, Sandine and Lilligren. So what concerns you the most there, Leafs fans? Because I'll, I'll tell you what it is for me. The third pair? Well, a lot of that's coaching. Sheldon Keefe should be able to manage the third pair, especially at home. And Sandine is pretty good. And Lilligren has looked good. As long as Lilligren continues to improve, which he should, I have no problem there. Muzzin and Brody? In terms of how they play in their own end, that's the Leafs' best and second best options, is it not? The Muzzin and Hall pair is the shutdown pair? No, it's not. It's the Muzzin and Hall pair. This is the shutdown pair. Riley Dermott is the one that has me tugging my collar a bit. Yes, Dermott has played on the right side, I think exclusively this season, but he hasn't done it against the competition that Riley faces and with that amount of ice time. If that works, Great. The Leafs can even explore the possibility of maybe even trading Justin Hall. And I don't know what you think about the guy, but at two million bucks, Kyle Dubas is right. He has value. Someone would trade for him. And the Leafs give those three pairings what should be a relatively soft target. Yes, the Red Wings have a wild amount of firepower, but again, 
The Leafs should win this thing. Enough of the preamble. Bang, bang, bang. We have nine goals to talk about. Let's go through it quick. The first period is a good start. The Leafs are out shooting the Red Wings. The Red Wings start to catch up a bit, but the Leafs ultimately hold on to the puck more and shoot it more than the Red Wings. And late in the period, they are rewarded. Final seconds of the first. Mitch Marner gets the zone entry and the Leafs hold on to it. TJ Brody, with that new look pairing, gives it to Jake Muzzin, who is open. And I always appreciate Muzzin's willingness to shoot the puck, but I gotta say, Thomas Grice has to have this. There's no screen in front he's just way too committed to the right side and Muzzin shoots it at the open net too bad for him Muzz Lightyear with the goal and the Leafs are up one nothing heading into the second a reminder to be quick with your bathroom breaks a nine goal game was one nothing heading into the second second period Red Wings not going away and they get the power play John Tavares two minutes for slashing on Michael Rasmussen two minutes for you can't do that Peter Morazic in net for the Toronto Maple Leafs by the way not wanting to miss a game against his former team he was sharp up until this point but Zadina on the power play just rips it man what a shot it's amazing that a player as talented as Zadina almost sort of gets lost in this Red Wings group that's how many great kids they have I was gonna say Morazic probably should have had this too because he just sort of gets beat by it but I think it's actually a pretty sneaky shot from Zadina because he doesn't really get Morazic to drift over or anything but he hides the release of his shot with the Tavares screen and Morazic just has no time to pick it up but Michael Rasmussen who gave the Red Wings the power play gives the Leafs one by taking a call on Jason Spezza. You don't hurt dad! Just like in the first period, the Leafs win an opportunity very late in the second period. The second power play unit is out. Nick Ritchie with a hard battle for the puck helps Michael Bunting win it back to Jason Spezza. Watch Spezza work here. Spezza knows he's got Ritchie screening in front. Grice looks the wrong way. Slap pass to Michael Bunting who makes no mistake with the tip. Michael Bunting with the big celly. He loves scoring in this building and yes, Jason Jason Spezza's slap pass will get the shine here, but Nick Ritchie, his first point as a Leaf, and honestly, well earned on this play. Yeah, it's the secondary assist, but Michael Bunting doesn't get that goal if Spezza can't pull off that pass, and Spezza can't pull off that pass unless Ritchie is doing what he's doing in front. Or maybe Spezza could have given Bunting that pass, but it would have been stopped on account of Grice would have been looking the right direction. Remember our discussion from the Rangers game? Sheldon Keefe saying the Leafs were getting clean looks? Too clean? That dirty look right there gave Bunting a clean look. So now, the Leafs head into the third period with a lead at home against the team who played last night and their leading scorer is out of the lineup. This should be a just a just a sleepwalk. Cabby, Cabral Richards of Sportsnet, he joined me for a watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle, and he was kicking himself because he loves a good bet, and he's like, ah, oh, I bet the over on this game, and I should have took the under. And he was sad when he left at second intermission, but now I can say, uh, Cabby. Congrats. 17 seconds in, the Marner Tavares Kerfoot line gets to work. I thought they were great. But as much as I like the direction the Red Wings are going, this is bad. There's two blue sweaters in this picture. One of them has the puck, the other is about to, and the Red Wings have neither of them. Tavares with the easiest pass of his life to Kerfoot for the easiest shot of his life because, geez, I know the Leafs are struggling to start the season, but you gotta play defense against them. 3 1, 17 seconds in. Game over, right? Not long after, Travis Dermott, who was the guy I was worried about, is doing his job and and the rest of his team does not. Just like Kerfoot's goal, there's a Red Wing with the puck, there's a Red Wing without the puck, and the Leafs have neither of them. Maybe a miscommunication between Matthews and Riley, Rasmussen gives it to Jovalino, who's alone in front, his first goal of the season, and second of his career. He's got a shot. That's a good player, man, from this game. Um, amazing player. And now it's a one goal game again like that. A few minutes later, Morgan Riley says, all right, I signed that big deal. I want to make up for it. It's not the prettiest play, but sometimes you take lemons and make lemonade. Kerfoot tries to pass the puck over to Riley. It's, it's tipped and then it hits the boards and it bounces nowhere near where Riley thinks. So rather than give up what could be a nasty one-timer here, he dives for it and smacks it out of the leaves zone and directly onto the stick of Kerfoot, which is hilarious for a few reasons. Kerfoot must have passed that puck and then dashed. And second, how did the Leafs have a two on one? Because the Red Wings made a prayer circle around Mitch Marner and it didn't work. Kerfoot, who can pass, to Tavares, who can shoot, and the Leafs have a two goal lead again. Hope they hold on to it for a while. And they do not, because a few minutes later, Jovalino cooks William Nylander alive and gives the puck to Vlad Nemestikov, scores. It's a one goal game again. I haven't really been able to say this too often in this season or over the last few seasons, but Nylander had a kind of pedestrian game, eh? But it's okay because the Red Wings allow an empty netter and- oh, oh, it wasn't technically an empty netter? <laughs> if you're a goaltender, 
10 the goal! Even though this one isn't really Thomas Grice's fault. Grice out of the net gives it to Nick Letty who just completely panics, does not read the situation at all. He's got Osterly there but he sees two blue sweaters. Neither of those blue sweaters care about Osterly. One's got his back turned to him, the other is going in the other direction. But he knows he's got Mitch Marner barreling down on him so he just goes bah! and throws it in front of the net where Mitch Marner picks it off and then taps it into the net scoring what would go on to be the game winning goal. And forget the fact that it was a funny goal, Mitch Marner ah! gets one! Get in there buddy! He didn't even look happy about it because he's like that's not how I pictured it. I pictured it going in, didn't you? Thank you to Mitch for the goal, but thank you to the Detroit Red Wings for the dang it every Thursday on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. The Leafs win the- oh my god they allowed another one. And I hate that this goal went in because the Leafs have had a horrible time defending this lead tonight, but also I kind of felt like it was an accident and also Mitch seemed deflated and dejected after that when we're trying to get him his cookies! His stick breaks, he leaves to the bench, he goes and gets another one, the puck is thrown in front and it's deflected and yes maybe Marner overcommits to the net when he comes back but hronik has got a bomb, an underrated bomb in this league. I think Marner's reaction to this goal says a lot about where his head's been at this season and the Leafs need him to play like Marner. I thought he really did in this game. He, he got the one goal and it was kind of a weird one but he was playing with the creativity and fun and energy that we're accustomed to seeing out of this guy. I hope he's not too down on himself. It's really up to the team's leadership to be like look you had a great game. Yeah but the goal- I don't care about the goal! And of course the Leafs- Wah! Okay Mrazek had to kind of come up big in the last few seconds. Holy smokes with the no style points huh? Whatever, two points. Two, two points in the... <sighs> two points. Questions? Thoughts on Dermot's performance tonight? Was the top pair good enough to keep Hall in the press box? Okay, I thought your first question was good. Dermot uh, was good in this one. I liked him on the top pair. I'd like to see him there again. Was the top pairing good? Well, no, nah, you ruined it, but I don't think it was Dermot's fault. Because Brody Muzzin looked pretty good and Sandine Lilligren, Lilligren in particular looked really good. I'm comfortable saying that was Lilligren's best NHL game, seriously. So I get the impression that this is a hard reset that the Leafs are just trying to get Justin Hall's attention but the only reason he'd be getting back into the lineup after this game I think would be seniority. And the other difficult thing is I think we're getting very close to the point, if we're not there already, that Lilligren should be in the lineup every night. I want to see what this kid's got. And here's Sheldon Keefe. I really liked Sandine and Lilligren. In the offensive zone, they did a lot of good things. You can clearly see the chemistry they have with each other. Kind of think where there's smoke, there's fire here, and Dubas is getting a little itchy. And Morgan Riley who I thought was gone because the Leafs wouldn't be able to afford him, well now he's going to make seven and a half million dollars next season. Are they going to make changes? If they are, when? And if they do, who? So Steve, are you on the Raymond and Cider hype train? Lucas Raymond was fine. I, I didn't really get the Lucas Raymond moments that I've been seeing in highlights. Mo Cider, I noticed all night. That dude was super active. He's a huge part of the Detroit Red Wings and that pick is looking pretty good from Stevie Y. But I tell you what man, Zadina has that shot but Joe Valino was unreal in this game and I wanted the Leafs to pick him in 2018. He went 30th overall, 29th was Sandine. Now I'm happy with how well Sandine has turned out and I mean, let, let's be honest, the Leafs need, need Sandine. They needed a defenseman. However, oh, <laughs> Valino looks good. Slightly off topic, thoughts on Reimer playing his butt off with seven sharks in COVID protocol. I just want to let you know, James Reimer is never off topic. That's number one. Number two, I can only assume the San Jose Sharks got shelled and James Reimer did his best, which basically describes his entire Leafs tenure. So I am not surprised to see James Reimer try his butt off. Oh, I should probably congratulate uh, the, the current Leaf goalie, Peter Mrazek, on his first win. Thanks buddy. Got it, Miss James. Anyway, uh, a lot has happened over the last few days. Uh, the last video on this channel is me talking about the Morgan Riley extension. 
On SDPN, we have a long and heavy interview with Rick Westhead of TSN uh, talking about all the updates in the Chicago Blackhawks case and Kyle Beach and how that is not done and not done by a long shot. Once again, that's on SDPN. Uh, visit sdpn.ca and um, obviously prepare yourself. It's heavy stuff, but for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Mitch got one! Hey!